lawyer for the football coach accused of kidnapping and killing 10-year-old Haley Owen says the man plans to plead not guilty. Good afternoon, I'm Brittany Keeper. And I'm Angie Bailey. Thanks for joining us. Craig Woods, public defender, says... Despite the charge of first-degree murder, kidnapping, and armed criminal action against him, Woods accused of grabbing Haley Owens as she walked home from a friend's house Tuesday evening, and court records indicate her body was found in Woods' basement. Police say they also found pornography. Wood appeared at the hearing by video from jail where he is being held without bond. Haley's parents, older brother, and other family members were at that hearing. We heard from Haley's mother Thursday evening when she spoke to reporters and remembered her daughter. High-spirited, laugh, she laughed all the time, smile, wanting to help. She loved to help me babysit. She loved little kids. She didn't have a dangerous bone in her body. A preliminary hearing is set for April 7th, but the public defender is requesting a new judge. That motion, as well as other details of the case, will be discussed at the criminal setting March 19th. The news out of Springfield this week surrounding the death of Owens has sparked conversations in many mid-Missouri schools about child safety. Teachers and counselors are talking to kids about what to do if they're approached by strangers. Susan McClintock has been teaching for almost 30 years and says, like all drills, she encourages students to practice what they learn at home. McClintock teaches fifth grade at Alpha Heart Lewis Elementary School in Columbia and says her goal is to prepare her students. And when they make good choices and they're aware of their environment and then when they do that, then they're, they're going to be okay. You can't want them to live in fear. You can't expect them to live in fear. You just have to have them and equip them with the best tools possible. McClintock says her students will discuss current events in the coming days and she plans to address Haley Owen's story. You may have seen more police officers than usual on the roads today. Columbia police have extra patrols out enforcing Missouri seatbelt law today through Sunday. KOMU8's Megan Schultz is live on Rock Quarry Road where she talked to an officer giving out tickets to people not buckled up. You definitely want to buckle up this weekend because I was out here for only about 45 minutes and saw several people get tickets. Now the extra enforcement is possible because of a grant from MoDOT. The grant comes after 62 Missourians have died on the roads this year and 71% of those people were unbuckled. Columbia officer Scott Decker says the biggest problem he sees is children learning bad habits from their parents. He also One of the, the folks I just stopped a moment ago, I asked him why he wasn't wearing a seatbelt and he said he was in a rush to get to class. Officers will be out here through Sunday. Moda says the next time you'll see extra law enforcement of the seatbelt law will be in a few months because grants are given on a quarterly basis. Reporting live in Columbia, Megan Schultz, KOMU 8 News. The Columbia City Council met this morning to discuss how the city can move forward with development after voting down a controversial tax increment financing plan. Last night, the Planning and Zoning Commission voted to rezone land near the MU campus to allow a developer to build a new student housing complex despite that denial. American Campus Communities wants to build a five-story, 718-bed student complex on Providence Road near Turner Avenue. City Council members said they turned down the TIF because they couldn't agree the taxes were the fairest way to pay for the infrastructure improvements. That was basically what the Planning and Zoning Commission's charge is, is to deal with zoning issues, regardless of what other items may have a effect on its success. The Planning and Zoning Commission warned American campus communities it could run into some issues with the city, but the company wanted to go ahead and get that property zoned anyways. If you have some bills to pay online with the city of Columbia, need to do it before 10 o'clock tonight, or you could have to wait a few. You will have to wait a few days to try again. Columbia's Information Technologies Department is going to perform some system maintenance to the online billing system from 10 tonight until 5 p.m. on Sunday. During the period, the system won't be available, and you won't be able to make utility payments or pay for building permits. The Missouri Supreme Court set its fifth execution date since November. Jeffrey Ferguson will be executed on March 26th for kidnapping, raping, and killing a 17-year-old girl. Ferguson abducted Kelly Hall from her job at a service station back in 1989. Her body was found two weeks later on a farm. An autopsy shows Hall was strangled to death after being raped. An expansion to the Medicaid program could mean 24,000 jobs opening in Missouri. The Department of Economic Development said raising eligibility levels for the health care law could bring $9.9 .9 billion in new wages. Republicans have rejected the expansion in the past, saying the state cannot afford it.
from a college dorm room to a clothing store. One Missouri entrepreneur says you don't have to wait to graduate college to start a business. KOMU8's Colleen Menadir is here with more on his advice for getting started at a young age. Brian Simpson and other entrepreneurs came to Columbia today to talk about how to open up your own business. Simpson is the co-owner and CEO of screen printing business called Five Pound Apparel. Simpson spoke to the Boom event in Columbia today and he started the Missouri is Awesome campaign last July. He and his clothing can be seen all over Columbia shops. Simpson started his business using Google and self-help books and he believes anyone can open up a business. You know, in a sense, anyone can. I think the, the, the primary thing is to find something that you're passionate about. Because when you're passionate about something, it doesn't become a job, it doesn't become anything. It's just your life. It's something that you love to do. Simpson is just 25 years old. He says starting a business while you're young gives you time to overcome more obstacles. City and county leaders spent the morning talking about schools, snow, and transit plans. Columbia Transit Supervisor Drew Brooks highlighted new routes and technologies the city is adding to buses. Leaders also discussed the successes and obstacles faced during the snow and ice storm a few weeks ago. They debated the problems with sidewalk clearing and the possibility of better tracking of plows. The meeting was an opportunity for several agencies to meet to work together on shared goals. It's important that we make sure we work together and everybody has an understanding of the timeline and when things are happening so that um, everything works out in the end and we can open a school with a new road outside of it. The group also talked about how the city can move forward with development given this week's news that a TIF district was voted down. Leaders discussed a timeline for construction of a new school on Scott Boulevard too. The post office held a job fair today at its downtown location. It's looking to fill 15 mail carrier positions. With Columbia's unemployment rate at 3.7 percent, it's an opportunity for job seekers to get to work. Postal representatives were there to answer questions. Postal worker Cheryl Thompson says rural carriers will still be making $15 an hour just to start. She says some of the positions will require the employees to have their own vehicles, but a maintenance allowance is, is provided. Thompson says she's looking for specific qualities in applicants. Uh, we look for someone with good work ethic, um, just kind of a good attitude, somebody excited to do the job and to serve the community. Thompson says the jobs will remain open until they're filled and the applicants who are chosen will have an opportunity to move up in the ranks. Severe thunderstorms have left a path of damage across the southeast and lightning from one of those storms sent an Alabama home of a former mayor up in flames. KOMUH Shay McAllister is here with tonight's News Across the Nation. A baby's life was saved on a Miami Expressway thanks to the child's aunt and people who stopped to help. Pamela Razea jumped out of her car on the Dolphin Expressway Thursday afternoon with her five-month-old nephew screaming the baby couldn't breathe. Rosea started breathing into the baby's mouth and an officer who was flagged down to help started to perform chest pumps. The baby was transported to Jackson, Medical Hosp Jackson Memorial Hospital's pediatric unit in stable condition. Severe thunderstorms are rolling across the southeast and into the east coast, and they're leaving a path of destruction behind. The storms hit parts of Mississippi, Kentucky, and Alabama this week. High winds scattered debris and knocked down power lines and trees. Many homes went without power as utility crews worked to repair the damage. Some schools in the area are closed today because of the downed power lines. And a lightning strike from an overnight storm sent an Alabama, Alabama house up in flames early this morning. Neighbors and family said the house belonged to the town's former mayor, Charles Little. Rescuers say the family was able to help him out of the home before it was engulfed in flames. Authorities say fires like this can be common during storms with frequent cloud to ground lightning. And that's your first look around the nation. Now in your world news, Ukraine's president signed an agreement with opposition leaders to, on Friday, sparking celebration from protesters who feel they've won a hard-fought victory. Protesters gathered in Independence Square to celebrate concessions by Ukraine's president, Viktor Yanukovych. The agreement reached between the president and protesters plans to weaken the presidency, holds early elections to form a coalition government in 10 days. But the European Union's foreign policy chief says there's still more to do. Nine Muslim militants were killed Friday after attacking the presidential palace in Somalia. The nine were members of the Al-Shabaab militant group. Two car bombs detonated to begin the attack. Somalia's president was not harmed, but two government officials were killed. Despite the attempted removal of Al-Shabaab 
In 2011, militants have continued to attack the city seemingly at will. More violence in Venezuela today as a former beauty queen is laid to rest. Family and friends of the 22-year-old former Miss Tourism says she was shot down by armed militia who opened fire during an anti-government demonstration in Valencia. Meanwhile, in Caracas, people continue to protest against the government. A major anti-government rally is planned tomorrow to protest the arrest of opposition leaders. Get out there and enjoy the warmer weather right now because it may not stick around for long. Let's check in with Kenton for more on what we can expect. Yeah, Brittany, we are definitely warmer now than we were 24 hours ago. Not warmer than yesterday, though. We were in the 70s for our high temperatures. But yesterday afternoon, we were actually in the 40s here. So we're about 15 degrees warmer right now in Colombia than we were 24 hours ago. And looking at our winds, we're still seeing about 25 miles an hour out there in Colombia. We're still a, a little breezy out there, but overnight tonight, those will calm down just a little bit. We're feeling like right now still in those 50s, 55 in Colombia, 58 down in Jeff City. It's a nice warm one uh, really throughout all of mid-Missouri right now now above average at least for our temperatures right now and looking at the next 12 hours here or a few hours I should say on our KOMU8 weather app we are going to get down into the 40s and eventually into the 30s as we head overnight tonight but all of your full forecast coming up in just a bit it's a battle of the sexes we'll tell you who loses weight faster and why why taking too many vitamins could double a man's risk for a certain disease and right now you're taking a sunshiny look over Highway 63. It's 510 and this is KOMU 8 News First at 5. Coverage you can count on. Hey everyone, welcome back to KOMU 8 News First at 5. Here's a live look over the Lake of the Ozarks. You can see not too many clouds in the sky and the sun is starting to go down, getting a little bit darker out there. Not seeing much snow on the ground though. A lot of that hasn't melted away. We've been pretty warm here the past few days and that's going to continue at least right now into the beginning of our weekend. But looking at temperatures right now across the Midwest, we are seeing temperatures still pretty warm out there. 57 right now in St. Louis, 54 over there in Kansas City. Looking at 38 in Des Moines, 54 over in Nashville while it's 32 two in Chicago, a cold one for them. A little closer to home here, we are still in the 50s, 56 in Versailles, 58 in Jeff City, 55 in Columbia, 56 in Mexico, and 48 up in Hannibal. Still in the 50s here for our day. Wind-wise, though, we are a little bit heavier here, about 25 degrees, or 25 miles an hour here in Columbia. Now, these winds right now are from the southwest. As we head overnight tonight into your day tomorrow, these winds are going to change, and they're actually going to be from the northwest here, and that's going to give us a, a little bit of some cooler temperatures here, but not too much here. We're going to be pretty warm here, so on our Saturday. Looking at our satellite and radar, the cold front that we saw move through yesterday that made us cool down a lot here, really almost 20 degrees here within just a few hours yesterday. That's all moving off towards the east right now. We're seeing uh, a lot of that over along the east coast. They're seeing cooler temperatures right now, and that is still the same storm that was firing up tornadoes throughout the Midwest last night. Taking a little bit of a closer look here, closer to mid-Missouri, we are seeing a cold front right up to the north of us here, and this is going to push right down into our area as we head into our day tomorrow, but it's almost going to be become stationary. It's really going to be right over central Missouri throughout Saturday. And then finally on Sunday, that's when it's going to push right on down. And that's when we're really going to see a little bit more of a cool down here is on Sunday. Otherwise, we're just seeing a few clouds in the area. Otherwise, we're mostly sunny here as the sun does go down. You can probably see a nice look at the sunset if you take a look out your window. Otherwise, at our precip cast here, we're going to see a chance for a few sprinkles here in our northern viewing area overnight tonight. This is 8 p.m. tonight. Could see a few sprinkles as the cold front does approach a little bit closer, but really a very little little precipitation expected. We should all remain mostly dry. Otherwise, as we head into Saturday, just seeing a nice mix of sun and clouds throughout the area, but we're going to see uh, quite a bit of sunshine tomorrow as well. Looking at our evening here, 47 degrees by 7 p.m., 40 degrees by 11 p.m. It's going to be mostly sunny by that time as well. Then as we head overnight tonight, we're going to see temperatures dropping into about 34 degrees. Then we're going to see increasing clouds here and then west winds only 5 to 10 miles an hour. So finally, our winds are going to finally calm down just a little bit. Then as we head into the next three days, we are going to warm up for our Saturday here tomorrow. A mix of sun and clouds and then northwest winds only 5 to 10. So warm, we're still going to be in the 50s. Our average high temperatures are normally in the mid 40s this time of the year. So still above average for us, a nice mild day. But then as that cold front moves through, we're going to see uh, colder temperatures here on Sunday. 37 on Sunday down into the 20s by the time we get into midweek next week. So a bit of a cool down. I guess enjoy the temperature tomorrow because that's going to be the last 50 we see for at least the next eight days. A big drop coming after that. A big drop. It's still nice out today. We'll try to concentrate on them. Thanks, Ken. Exercise is vital to weight loss. We'll tell you how much exercise just won't cut it, though, after the break. 
In your health news, a new vitamin study confirms that too much of a vitamin is not always a good thing. A large trial looked at the impact vitamin E and selenium had on prostate cancer. Researchers found that men who already had high levels of selenium and also took supplements nearly doubled their risk for developing prostate cancer. Men who had too low levels of selenium and took vitamin E also had an increased risk. Researchers say men older than 55 should avoid high doses of the supplement. A new study reveals some startling statistics on those carrying too much weight. According to University of Alabama researchers, obese women get one hour of vigorous exercise a year. The year-long study tracked the eating habits and activity levels of 2,500 adults. On average, obese women got just more than an hour of vigorous exercise each year. Obese men got about three and a half hours a year. Experts recommend all adults complete more, complete more than an hour of vigorous exercise each week. Weight loss is a challenge for everyone, but who loses weight faster, really? A new study out of England found while men do drop the pounds faster, it doesn't take too long for women to catch up. Researchers put men and women on the same diet and found after two months, men lost twice as much weight and three times as much body fat as women. But six months into the study, the weight loss evened out. Experts say men's muscles have more lean tissue, which burns more calories than body fat. They say testosterone also plays a big role. The flu is hitting young people harder than usual this flu season. According to the Centers for Disease Control, people between the ages of 18 and 64 represent 61 percent of all flu-related hospitalizations this season. That is a significant jump from previous years when that age group only accounted for 35 percent. Scientists say the increase is due to this group being more susceptible to one of the main flu strains this year. We asked you what role you think schools should play in kids' safety. We'll look at what you had to say in today's talk after the break. After the tragic death of Haley Owens, schools in mid-Missouri chose to address the situation, talking to students about what to do if approached by a stranger. We asked you on Facebook about the role schools should play in these safety situations. Here's what you had to say. Many of you thought teachers and parents should work together. A.J. Jane said, I think the teachers and parents should use this as a learning tool. Make it so Haley didn't die in vain and possibly save another child. Encourage them to talk about anyone who makes them uncomfortable or uneasy. Crystal Calvert said, as a parent, I think it's our responsibility to teach our children how to be safe in these situations. I completely agree with talking to them at school. Take an hour, even 30 minutes every six months or so just to run over the basics. Tammy Davis Scott had a different perspective and went one step further saying, I don't think it's the school's responsibility to do this for parents or instead of parents. I think everyone who's in a child's life needs to be having these conversations. So what do you think about a school's role in teaching safety? Add your voice to the conversation on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Hi everyone, welcome to today's Pet Corner. With me today have Jamie Lannister. He is a five month old domestic short haired kitty. He's got a beautiful coat and the exact same namesake as a character from Game of Thrones. Hopefully he's a little bit less conniving though. He's a really sweet guy and he wants to be your forever feline friend. If you wanna learn a little bit more about bringing Jamie Lannister home, you can log on www.cmhspets.org or 573-443-PETS. Here's a look at what we're following for KOMU 8 News at 6. A former MU football player's big announcement recently got quite a bit of attention. We get your opinion on how we covered the Michael Sam story. And snow is finally melted out there, thank goodness. What it means, though, for your spring weather. A curious snow leopard was caught on tape in China. This sighting is a rarity because wild snow leopard populations have declined globally because of poaching and shrinking habitats. Two rare photos were taken of the endangered species this past December. Authorities say the cats in the area have only been captured on camera eight times since 2011. Well, we are seeing temperatures right now about 34 degrees out there. I, I'm sorry, we're going to see 34 overnight tonight. We're in the 50s right now, actually a warm afternoon for us. 34 overnight tonight, though, increasing cloud cover and less windy. That's a very good thing. We're almost seeing 60 mile an hour gusts yesterday. And then we're going to cool down for this weekend. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. See ya.